Hi, for this recording, I'm going to show you how to find a symmetry group of a regular hexagon. In this case, we are given a regular hexagon with six vertices labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to write down the permutation group of this regular hexagon in cycle form. Let's call this G here. Now, the reference to this is John Farline's text. The first course in abstract algebra, section 8, page 79 to 80. There are similar examples for equilateral triangle and square. In particular, the n dihedral group dn is a group of symmetry of a regular n cone. In this case, since we have a hexagon, the group G is actually D6. There are six rotations and six reflection. The rotation is actually a rotation of 60 degrees about the center. You can be anti-clockwise or clockwise, so I'm going to take anti-clockwise. And then there are reflection as well. Reflection along the line, bisecting 1, 6, and 3, 4, for example, is one of the reflection. Reflection in the diagonal, 21, 4, also another symmetry. Let's look a little bit of detail for rotation. Rotation about center 60 degree and clockwise. I have put some marker on the hexagon, a dot, a star, and an arrow. Now after the rotation 60 degree and clockwise, the dot at location 1 move to location 2. The star at location 2 move to location 3. The arrow at location 3 move to location 4. So whatever object you have followed that whatever object of location 1 and move to location 2 then object of location 2 move to location 3 and object on location 3 move to location 4 and so on so eventually we get a 6 cycle we call it row 1 this rotation 60 degree anti-clockwise it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 now let's look at a reflection in a diagonal joining 1, 4 the marker we have also is a dot, a star, and an arrow at location 1, 2, and 3. After the reflection, we find that the dot at 1 still stay put at 1. The star at 2 will move to 6. And the arrow at 3, location 3, will move to location 5. So by using this, we know that 1 will stay put, 1 goes to 1. 2 go to 6 and 6 go to 2, 3 go to 5 and 5 go to 3, and 4 they put. So you have 2, 6, 3, 5. We call this mu 1. Altogether, there are 12 symmetry and there are 6 rotation and 6 reflection. So let me show you the picture here. I have an original hexagon with the marker, a dot, and a star, and an arrow. I can keep on rotate 60 degree anti-clockwise and get all the various configuration. Right after rotation, you can see the on the top line, these are all rotation. Right, all the top line rotate, rotation. I can keep on rotate and see what happens. And then at the bottom I can do a reflection mu one along the diagonal. So I get a new position of a dot star and arrow. Then I can keep Rotate again, 60 degree anti-clockwise, can see all the different location of marker again. So all together there are 12 different symmetry. Now to write down all these 12 done in, in the cycle form, one fast way is write down all the rotation first. So I have one rotation, E, rotation of 0 degree, and rotation 60 degree, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Rotation 120 degree is actually square of rotation 60 degree. So we we'll just keep on multiply itself, we get all the six rotation. Then just pick one indirect symmetry, it means one reflection. So I have one reflection, just now this is mu here, mu1. So in order to get all the other, what you do is take all the direct symmetry, all the rotation, multiply by 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6, multiply by 3, 5, 2, 6, and then you get 
1346. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say I have 142536. So 142536. And then I multiply by 3526. Multiply by the new one, 3526. And then I'll get 142356 after multiply, which is this one. So by doing so, you can get all the trial symmetry without looking at the picture. But since the hexagon is not a relatively difficult picture, so you can also get all the symmetry by looking at the diagram and figure out the cycle notation for the symmetry. That's the end of the recording.